gold is the one asset which has survived every single panic in recorded history intact. In 2008, gold's price fell initially, surprising many, but the reality was that gold was providing liquidity in an illiquid marketplace. Once markets stabilized and QE began in earnest, gold's price soared. But how can we expect gold to act in the next financial crisis? So I think it's very, I think it's very difficult uh, to speculate on what is going to happen to gold and what's going to happen to, uh, to how it's going to happen. But I think what is safe to say is that gold is inversely correlated to confidence in the financial system. And the fact that gold is independent from the governments, from the banking system, is what cre and scarce, is what creates a tremendous potential uh, value. I don't think we're going to have another 2008. I mean, we're going to have something that's different from 2008. The reason I don't think necessarily that's going to be the same is because the problem that 2008 revealed, which is excessive debts uh, and excessive leverage, has essentially been kicked upstairs on the, to the sovereign level. And so what was a private debt crisis uh, is likely will come back as a sovereign debt crisis, which is a completely different animal with very different uh, parameters. So whereas a lot of people are telling me now, or I hear a lot of people saying, well, the banking system is much safer because the leverage is lower, because there's less rehypothecation, uh, the answer to that, well, that may be true, but if the currency in which they measure everything is debauched, is debauched or devalued, and that may happen overnight in a very different way that what happened in 2008 happened. We, we know the end game. We know that all of these debts cannot be paid. We know that the unfunded liabilities cannot be met in, in terms of real purchasing power. So then the question is, how does that get resolved? Well, there are only a couple of ways it can get resolved. is either through inflation or deflation. Deflation meaning defaults. In the likely event that we do have some form of situation similar to that of 2008, and no matter what form that event might take, gold remains one of the few ways that you can protect yourself and preserve both your wealth and purchasing power. Man's connection to gold is not just a financial one, however. History is filled with deeply personal stories that demonstrate gold's role as a store of wealth, as protection from government confiscation via inflation and debasement, and as an insurance policy that, when called upon, pays out in ways that change the lives of those who own it. I know a person who grew up in Vietnam, whose father was a translator for the US military during the Vietnam War. And when the US left Vietnam, they were unable to leave with the, United, with the US forces. And so they were left behind. And having been left behind, they obviously were subjected to oppression by the uh, communist regime. It so happened that the family of 14, one of the uncles there, was a dentist. And he was able to accumulate over the next, whatever, 10, 12 years, a certain amount of gold. So that in the late 80s, uh, this family was able to pay seven ounces of gold per person so times 14, over 100 ounces of gold, to get 14 seats on a boat that left Saigon in the middle of the night, uh, lost power, and the next day drifted at sea for a few days, and eventually was towed to the Malaysian coast by the Malaysian Coast Guard. They spent two years in a camp for displaced persons. They eventually made their way to Singapore, where the father was able to go to the U.S. Embassy, present his credentials, showed that he was a translator for the U.S. for interpreter for the U.S. forces. And the whole family of 14 was given visas, visas to come to the United States. And that's, you know, these people's lives were saved. Uh, and what did it do? It's, you know, what did it take? It took seven ounces of gold uh, per person for a family of 14. And so I think that's as good an example of uh, gold being plan B as I can come up with. A couple years ago, I was at a wedding and some friends of ours, I was talking with some friends of ours, and they were, uh, they were Russian and Ukrainian and had emigrated here. Uh, we're now American citizens. And we got to talking about what happened in the 1990s in Russia. They described to me uh, the woman, my, my, uh, her father had been a doctor in her village in the Ukraine. And she said, we'd had enough saved in the bank. He, we were the richest family in the village and we had enough in the bank uh, to buy five cars, uh, which for her, apparently for that village was quite a bit. And she said they, they closed the banks for two weeks, and when they reopened the banks, 
we took the money out, we bought groceries for one month. And you know, the, uh, her husband uh, said, yeah, similar story, I was saving up to buy a motorcycle and uh, had enough saved to buy a motorcycle and my dad wouldn't let me buy it. Closed the bank for two weeks, banks opened back up, I took the money out and bought a carton of cigarettes. So I said to them, I said, so I probably don't need to explain to you, I said, how, how did gold do? And they both laughed and they said, anyone that had gold, silver, jewelry, they did, they did totally fine. I love the story of how the French spirited their gold out of France and off to Canada and various other places when the, when the, when the Germans arrived. It's a great story and they have to make a movie out of it. I mean, it's really good. And basically, what I mean, they split up their gold reserves into, into tiny little portions and they went off on, you know, mule carts and fishing boats and, and they, they got their nation's wealth out of the country and they did it before the advancing army. I mean, it was, it's, a, it's a story of daring do and all of that sort of stuff, fantastic. I once heard a story about the Soviet Union um, where gold obviously was, was forbidden. You could go to jail if, if you had physical gold, but you were allowed to have uh, wedding rings, gold wedding rings, and that was a smart guy. Uh, and, and he had like 50 wedding rings. So every month or every couple of months he went to the market and, and had just enormous purchasing power due to his gold ring. And I think this clearly shows that, that um, you just have to own at least some gold.